Thank you for joining me for another Quick Hits Conversation. I'm Dr. Robin. With me today, I have Rick Alcantara. He does public relations, digital marketing, and crisis communications at Rick Alcantara Consulting. I have Dr. Bob Choate. He's a perpetual student and endlessly curious. He works with executives on mental transformation and creating states of flow. He has eight years of military experience, has worked in the LAPD, was a stage hypnotist, owned a wildly successful business, and is now going back to school for yet another PhD, this time in physics. I have Simon Coles. He is the CEO of Amphora Research Systems, where they free scientists from the tyranny of paper. He is also the founder of the Better Conversations Foundation. The question I have today, certainty is not a sign of credibility. How do you tell the difference? Simon, kick us off. So I think there's two parts to this. One is certainty. What signal does it send to you? And the second thing is, how do you tell that someone's credible? Mm. And they're not exactly the same. And I think certainly it, it is the case that if you are too certain about something, and this could get delightfully recursive as I claim to be very certain about certainty and credibility, but I think the, the more people are certain about something, the more you've got to think you haven't seen enough. And the more expert people are, the more they tend to couch their stuff in uh, various sort of... Um, uh, safeties as it were and context certainly if i heard that if there's a more complex nuanced explanation i would view that as more credible uh, the problem of course is that uh, if you're not smart you think that somebody who is really certain about it clearly knows what they're doing mm -hmm. and that might explain a lot of politics and everything else in life and crypto exchanges and all that kind of stuff. It, it certainly it explains quite a lot when I come across even experts who are certain about something, I tend to question their credibility, period. Mm -hmm. People who try to predict into the future, they're working off of the narrative of the past. That somebody says that, that they know everything about everything and they're certain about it, that's not a thing. So like even, even, even myself and all the education I have, and I can talk about psychology and neuroscience and all this stuff. The, the, the truth is, I don't know. And I have to know that, that, that I don't know. And, and, and I would uh, come out and, and, and tell people, yeah, I know about this subject at this period of time based on what I learned in historical fact. But historical, historical facts are not current facts, and it's not future facts. So I, I don't believe any expert can be certain. The problem is um, both our public discourse, the press, and also our education system do not reward hedging and seeming no. uncertain. You can't write an exam, an exam question sort of like the answer is like, well, it might be this or it might be that. Maybe not when you get to the advanced levels, maybe. But certainly in school, Correct. you better be certain. Correct. Yeah, well, you could you could feel that you have the best team in place. You could feel you have the best uh, uh, group of employees or the best uh, uh, players on your team. And on paper, it may look like you are a certainty to uh, be the best performer. But if the parts aren't playing well together, it may fail. You may also think that uh, by spending $4.4 .4 billion to buy Twitter, you're certain to change the world, but uh, it doesn't always work that way. And uh, certainly not a credible uh, source of information anymore. Mm. Also, so, uh, also, he was certain that everyone else was an idiot. Yes, exactly. I think there's also a certain level of how much does it matter? So here's an example. Uh, many years ago, I was dating a guy who was absolutely certain about something that I was going to buy. Not a big thing. I was going to spend less than $20. Absolutely certain that I should buy this thing. And so I did. I just, I bought the thing he said I should buy, even though I kind of thought maybe differently. I didn't question him as much as I should have. And then I got the thing home and I realized this is not going to work the way that I wanted it to work. And I kind of started asking him questions and realized he had absolutely no idea what he was talking about. He had just made a choice and gone with it. Right. So and I, more, in that case, it was less than 20 bucks. Who cares? But I should yeah. ask more questions. And, and there is something in the culture about the more certain you appear, the more credible you are and hence everyone. And so you're just faking it till you make it. I went to Israel once on a business trip and uh, didn't realize that the Israeli business culture, certainly in wherever I was, I don't know if it's a general thing, was basically you stand and pound the table and shout in business meetings. And the more certain you are and the more 
expressive and forceful you are will win the day. Mm. That was a shock to a very young English person. The interesting thing here, at least in the, in the US um, and probably in the UK as well, in politics, people come out and they make all these proclamations. There are certain things are the way they mm. say they are, and then they turn out not to be. And then of course their credibility becomes shot. It's interesting to see people then try to defend both sides of the equation, even if the, uh, and the answer was completely wrong. Well, and also it's like pe people changing their minds, politicians changing their minds. What was if somebody said Churchill probably or something, you know, I, when the facts change, I change my mind. What do you do? And that, that's the other thing about the whole certainty thing is you, you, you get yourself up on a hill and remove any possibility of um, changing your mind when the circumstances change. Because your credibility, you perceive your credibility came from your certainty. Mm. Right. How do you, like, like with, with an economist trying to predict the future, so they're certain that X, Y, and Z is going to happen based on ABC theory. Mm people will will fall upon what they learn again from from the past and and say that this is going to be happening. that's they're certain that this is going to happen one theory that that I will use is chaos theory we don't know what's what's going to happen it it is chaotic but chaos theory is there's a certain control element in there that people don't look at so but, so but, how do we decide if we circle back to the the original question how do you decide if something's credible you ask. A true mm. expert will welcome being thoughtfully questioned. Mm. And uh, so if you get an emotional reaction because you question them, then they're probably not credible. Their nope. certainty is all front. They're not offering guarantees. They're saying the like, most likely scenario based on our experience or all yeah. the times we've done this, we've done it 100 <laughs> times and 100 times it's turned out this way. Yeah. Most likely it will be the same, but right. you can't guarantee it. Yeah, I think this is the, it's one of the management skills you learn when you start managing uh, technical experts, where you can't question their technical expertise, but you can sort of prod their thought processes. And so you might say, well, what would cause this to be invalid? What would change this? What leads you to believe such and such? And to some extent, it doesn't really matter what they say. It's how they respond and how confident they are being walked around their decision space. And it's, it's just a real tell if they go, if they have an emotional response to that, for something from my perspective. I like asking the question, what would need to be true for X, Y, Z yeah. to happen? And if they can walk me through kind of that, to your point, Simon, the thought process, I, that's a good thing for me. But when, I think we said it earlier, if someone is pounding on the table and they are absolutely positive about something, that's a red flag for me. Like, wait a minute, why are you, why do you feel the need to be so confident mm. about this? Yes. Yeah, so, imagine. Uh, this is mansplaining. Mm. I mean, you're the yeah. woman here, Robert, but I would imagine that a lot of men under the term of mansplaining or whatever would be very certain about arbitrary stuff to you because you're a woman. One, one thing I noticed with, and, and, and especially with men, they're uncertain. And, and I know that they're uncertain because I had a, a good friend of mine and I tried to teach him a little bit about neuroscience. And then he went on national tv in front of all these people in the audience but he's very loud screaming almost explaining what he does to help people and he tried to explain the brain and he totally flubbed it up mm. but the audience and everybody including medical professionals bought what he said because of the way he explained it mm -hmm. i can't believe these people and people don't challenge, they'll nod their head. And we see this with politicians doing the same thing and other people. Oh, uh, the COVID misinformation. Correct. That's idiots being very certain. Yeah. You know, my, my 10 hours of research well, or my 10 minutes on Google is worth more than your PhD, mate. You know, mm -hmm. well, you, you start thinking about it does emotion and conviction influence people's uh, uh, idea mm. of credibility? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is I don't think people are self-aware because to your point, Simon, I've said to men who are explaining my expertise to me, you realize I actually have a doctoral degree in this place. And they're mm -hmm. like, yes, I do. But like, oh, right. once you say, but I'm out, no, we're not doing that. So I think it's interesting to, that what we're saying is that if you want someone to explain their cred credibility, start asking them questions and pay close attention to their response. So that is our 10 minutes. I'm going to cut us off there. Thank you so much for having this conversation with me. And I look forward to speaking to each of you again really soon.